Greetings everyone. I want to show you the basics of working with uh, elements in, uh, well specifically here, Excel and Word. Um, how you might copy and paste a graph or a table or other elements from Excel into Word. And this has bearing upon your lab reports and things like that that you'll be working on in Mechie 102. I'm focusing right now on Excel and Word um, on Windows. The basic elements should be fundamentally the same on the Macintosh, although there might be some small differences in how you do some of the actions, but the concept should be the same. And eventually at the end, I'll show you some things that really should work across the board on things that are not Excel and Word, but other programs too, some of the basic concepts here. So what you're looking at is in Microsoft Word, a something that should look familiar. This is a document that was created to, that was talking about the statics investigation for pre-studio. You might recognize a graph as something that you created as part of the studio assignment for that investigation. So what I'm showing you here is from the pre-studio document. Uh, it's changed around a little bit to get rid of some of the fancier formatting. The concept I want to focus on is how to put this image in this document in a way that's most efficient for, for kind of um, changing some of the looks here, some of the look of it here, some of the features. Let me actually show you now, if I click on this, <clears throat> this is a picture. Uh, you can tell because if I click on one of the handles that they're called, click on it so it hits these white dots, one of the handles, at the, say the top right, and drag that, I can resize this and the whole thing goes accordingly. Goes to, it keeps the same aspect ratio it's called. Okay, so it gives me the ability to kind of change this to make the sizes of the fonts and whatnot match or at least similar to what I have here in the Word document. And that's something that when I do these things, I try to keep that in mind. That if I'm eventually going to paste it from Excel into Word, let's say, um, which I do frequently here and you will probably do frequently, you might think ahead a little bit in terms of the fonts you use and things like that, which we've been talking about, trying to keep it sort of professional looking, keep things consistent, keep consistent sizes and so forth. That's why I've been making everything with the legends and the axis labels and the numbers and so forth, all basically 12 point font. Uh, the title up at the top of the graph or chart is probably 14 point, so it's a little bit bigger, but I don't take things too small on the chart or too large so that when I paste it into other things, it's kind of a consistent look. But this is an image. I'll show you there's a number of ways you could get to this. You don't have to even do it as an image, although that tends to be one of the more preferred ways, and I'll hopefully give you some indication why. But to do that, let me delete what's here. And let's say we were kind of starting from the beginning. Uh, what do you do to paste something into a Word document um, from Excel, fundamentally? So if I go back to the spreadsheet, this should look familiar. You would have created this as part of the studio assignment. You should have a graph somewhat similar to that. Um, but let's say I want to then copy that into Word. So I'll select it. I'm going to right click and say copy. You could use the shortcuts, of course. Back on Word, if you just hit uh, Control V, which would be paste or click the paste button in the home menu, paste it in. It looks almost identical to what it is in Excel, the same aspect ratio and everything. By doing just a simple paste, so you've created something that's not an image, it's actually a linked object. And I'll show you here if you click on it, you can still highlight these individual elements within the chart the axis labels and everything. Matter of fact, it even pops up these buttons, at least in Windows, on the right hand side where you can uh, control the, the chart elements and so forth. So this is not just a picture. Matter of fact, also, if you click on it, and let's say I grab this handle on the middle right on the outside of the uh, chart area, drag that to the right, it expands this and keeps everything similar in terms of sizes and so forth. It expands as if I had done that right in Excel. So then you could come in and maybe uh, better make use of the, the plot area, things like that. You can move around the legend if you want. You could, if you wanted to, delete the chart title, let's say. Um, I would recommend leaving it there, but you, know, you could argue that since there's a caption, maybe you don't need the title, things like that. You could do all that here. And that seems beneficial, but there are some drawbacks to this. So one of the primary ones is if I want to then, let's say I want to make it a little bit smaller, I wanted for some reason to put a couple of these side by side, you can see what's happening. It's crunching everything down. And I can fix that to some degree, but then it starts to lose some of the, you know, the, the utility of this graph. I'd have to go in and maybe shrink some of the fonts and so forth, which again, you could do. So this may be useful, it may not be. 
but that is one option for pacing there. I generally speaking, I would recommend you avoid doing it this way only because you can get into trouble sometimes when you change the locations of things or change the size of things in here and you don't realize that sometimes some of your legend might drop off. This is a frequent thing I see happen. Like it, in fact, you probably saw that before I resized the legend, it was only showing two of the, uh, the items. It wasn't showing all the data series on there. So that can be a problem. Um, it has benefits, but it has some, some detriments, and I'd recommend you not use that unless you really are sure you want to. Instead, here's what I'd recommend. Let me delete this. If you come back to Excel again, you can right-click and copy this, go back to Microsoft Word, but now instead of saying paste directly or using the keyboard shortcut, I'm going to go up to the paste button that's in the, the menu bar at the top there in the ribbon, I'm going to click and expand and there are some shortcut options here that show you a little bit about what this will do. I just usually jump straight to paste special. It, it will do probably what was shown in the icons there, but I like to be able to, to see it to sort of read out, so to speak, what's there. Um, what I would recommend you do here is either select picture, which is a, the enhanced meta file. That's one I frequently use. I've actually been using the picture PNG format uh, quite a bit more now, so they're both pretty similar. Uh, the PNG is a, is a lossless image format. I'm going to select that one and hit OK, but you could use also the enhanced meta file. Uh, you could try some of these others if you like. I, I do not recommend the JPEG or the GIF because those um, are not lossless formats. They're not going to look quite as sharp in here. And of course, the Microsoft Office graphic object, that's pretty much what happened by default. It gives it the ability to have some link to the um, the Excel file itself and that's what we're trying to avoid here. So I'm going to select PNG, hit OK. Now it looks at first a glance here to be exactly the same but if I click on it now you'll notice there is nothing happening on these other elements as I click. It does not recognize these as individual sort of dynamic things. If I click and drag the uh, say one of the upper corners I get that same concept of this just expanding sort of as a whole everything. In fact now if you click in the middle handle on the right and drag it to the right, I showed you that before with the, with the linked object, but if you do it now with the image, it stretches it out in a way that I do not recommend because now it's warped all your proportions. So I don't recommend you do that. I'm only doing that to show you um, the differences in here. This now is just a, a straightforward picture. There's no link or connectivity, so to speak, to the original functionality. But the benefit is if you want to shrink this down, you can. So don't make it ridiculously small to the point where you can't read things anymore. But if you had to for some particular purpose, you could. I would, again, try to recommend that you keep these uh, fairly similar size. Um, it would give you the ability here, again, you wouldn't want to do the same image, but if you copied and pasted that image again, you could put a couple of these side by side with each other if you wanted to, if there's some reason to do that. Okay, and, then, and this is a little small, and it's the same one. Don't put the exact same picture there. I just, in lieu of copying another one, I want to show you some of the features or benefits, so to speak. Okay, so that is one way to put your graphs into a Word document, a report, um, with a, with a, enhanced sort of functionality that's better for for the destination here. One other option I'll show you, I'm going to delete this one more time. I'm going to go back to Excel. <clears throat> I could use another tool or that's built into Windows. It's called the Snipping Tool, although the newer version that is called, I think it's called Snip and Sketch. I like the old version of the Snipping Tool better. Um, if you can't find that in Windows or you're working on a Mac, there are just plenty of other apps and other uh, programs you can get that do the same thing. They basically allow you to take a, a little snapshot of a region from your screen. So I'm going to start up the snipping tool. Um, I'll just show you how it works. If you want to learn about that, you can figure it out. If you run it, it's very easy to use. I'm going to click new and then it allows you to drag out a region that it will take a picture of. So I'm going to drag out just what I want here. Try to avoid the grid lines. I don't want the grid lines in my picture. So then it shows you what you've then snipped. This is just an image. So if you go to edit and then copy or again, control C, I'll come back to word. I'm going to paste that in now where I had my, my picture. Note something. If you go to click and expand here, there are no other options. There, there is no option except to paste this as an image because that's fundamentally what it is. For whatever reason, it tends to put it in here larger. It doesn't really matter. I can then click and, and like the images before, shrink this down, 
to, to make it a more uh, consistent size with other things that are in the document wherever you want that to be. So that is another option and that when they're using the snipping tool that would actually work across many many other programs that are not uh, Excel or Word. Uh, it should work on a Mac whatever the equivalent tool would be there or even on any um, operating system in whatever sort of a program you get or app you use that lets you do <clears throat> snips or screenshots like that. Uh, and it should also work even in, in Google Sheets and Google Docs. That's something that's kind of beyond just the, the specific program itself. And what I'm referring to is that notion of taking a snip. So there's a few different options of all of those, at least immediately here between taking things from Excel, like portions of the spreadsheet or graphs and pasting into Word, I would recommend the Paste Special. I'll show you one last thing here in Excel, if you wanted to be able to make it a little bit easier to take pictures of some of these tables, say you didn't want all these grid lines to show up if you were using the snipping tool, if you go to the view menu at the top there in the ribbon, you uncheck grid lines, it will turn off the grid lines for that sheet. They're still there, the cells are still um, differentiated, so to speak, they just are not showing the grid lines. You could then come in and put your own formatting in the table if you wanted. Uh, I think this would probably be fine. It's clear how the columns are arranged and so forth. Now if you did the snipping tool and you hit new, it enables you to, to, to pick these um, portions, say, to get a picture that you could paste as a table into Word without having all the grid lines in there. Um, so you could uh, say copy again. Let's go back to Word. And if I wanted to put that in, I'll just stick it right below the, I shouldn't do that. Let me move, maybe move it down a bit. For whatever reason I want the table to appear there, I'll hit paste. And again, I'll shrink that down so it's a more reasonable size, maybe something like that. Now I have that as a table without all the, the cluttered grid lines and so forth. A pretty neat professional looking table. I could create a caption for that and so forth. So again, there's some uh, information on how to manage um, documenting things from Excel in Word or similar types of uh, programs as you create your reports.